Hello, everybody. Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Joining me today is one of our two uh, great Hy-Vee dietitians. Got Aaron back in the house. Aaron, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you today? Doing wonderful. Uh, Aaron, today we're going to uh, dive into uh, what I've asked is that the holiday season can be busy for all of us. And sometimes the meal planning uh, this time of year gets a little difficult. Uh, and you're looking for those quick and easy meals. Uh, but uh, I think uh, it's all in the planning, uh, which is, uh, I think, important here. Uh, but uh, today, uh, we're going to find a way to make it a little bit simple and not so stressed out in the holidays with everything else going on. So uh, tell us a little bit about what do you share with information with people who are reaching out to you like, oh, my God, I got to eat healthy. I got to make this planning for my kill my how do you yeah. help them? <laughs> exactly. It's a busy time right now. And uh, we all understand that. And sometimes it is just hard to stay on top of your regular family meals. So one, don't stress about it. You know, the biggest thing to do is feed yourself and your kids and you'll get through it. But I have three simple steps um, and we'll go through those. Um, they can make, they may seem a little busy up front um, and may seem a little you might get a little stressed. Uh, you might think, oh, that's a lot of work. I don't even have time to think about that right now. But once you get in the groove, um, it will make it seem effortless and easy to save time. So three simple steps, make a plan, make a list, and prep ahead. Well, that doesn't seem difficult at all. I don't know what you're talking about. No, you, you, <laughs> and it, you're right. You're like, well, I guess not earth shattering, but Honestly, uh, from talking uh, with, with dietitians throughout the years from hy including yourself, uh, it is all about the planning that really will make your life a little bit easier, but it does have some work up front. So breaking this down, when you're making your plan, what would you suggest? How, where do we start? Yeah, I always say you start with a calendar, um, whether it's one that you're getting um for Christmas, you know, for the new year, or whether you just print out or um, do a grid on a piece of paper um, and use that calendar to mark down your dinner plans for the week um, and maybe just the month as well. Um, it's a busy time of the year with holiday parties and shopping and uh, activities and all the things with kids too. So planning in advance can really get your family around the table and enjoy family meals together. And when you are in that planning process too, uh, uh, trying to incorporate healthy uh, into that meal can be a little bit difficult. You don't need to totally go out of the, the norm, right? Uh, when you're planning this time of year uh, to try to work in that, that healthiest meal uh, per se, you, 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 can, you can take it slow. Exactly. Take it slow and think about your food groups, your, your protein, your grains, your fruits and vegetables and dairy. So think about your food groups when planning those meals. Again, don't go overboard. Maybe think about two to three food groups. Um, I always say three food groups per meal. And once you keep that really simple, you'll realize that you have a really good nutrient dense meal for your family. And do you ever follow or, or suggest to people too when you're building this plan to, uh, to consider leftovers like as part of the deal? So like you're going to make a little bit more because you're going to use it in a recipe on Wednesday. Is there uh, how do you factor that in? Absolutely, always plan for leftovers. Um, so for example, if you're going to make um, tacos for dinner, um, plan to have that for lunch the next day. Or do you have enough that you could do tacos for dinner two nights in a row? So planning for those leftovers is great. Maybe with those tacos, maybe you made rice, maybe you have only rice left over. So how can you incorporate that rice into your next meal? So get a little creative. And I think I'm jumping ahead a little bit. But um, yeah, it's all about creativity and thinking ahead. Yeah, and I'm thinking ahead too. I'm I want this plan to be uh you know totally right in there with uh making sure you're covering all uh all aspects there. Let's move on to step two, uh, and I like this: make a list, check it twice, time of year. <laughs> uh, but uh, in all seriousness, uh, the list when you head to a store, it, it can be really overwhelming when you get to the grocery store. Absolutely. And, you know, we're making that plan. We are then making a list based off our plan. We're factoring in our leftovers into that plan as well. And 
Um, this will help limit unwanted spending and food waste when you're going shopping. So double check what's already in your pantry to help avoid purchasing duplicate ingredients. Check your leftovers. What do you think you'll have leftovers of? Or what could you make extra to have leftovers for that next meal? Like, like rice, for example. And um, be creative. So like I said, checking your pantry can be really beneficial to see what you have on hand. Um, you can be creative with that and, you know, think, okay, I have a can of black beans. I have a can of tomatoes. I have some rice um, in the pantry. What can I make with those things? And maybe you'll only have to buy one or two ingredients for a full meal. Well, and I like too that you did cover a little bit about food waste because I think that's part of the problem when you don't plan ahead and you're like, well, I'm just going to, and I do this a lot and I hate to admit it, but you know, I'm going to pick up the carrots, the celery, and then I'm like, oh yeah, I'll just chop those up, throw them in. And then it's like, I get through half of it and then it's like, oh man, when did I chop that or buy that? And, you know, did I plan? So mm -hmm. I think, you know, that, that in itself, uh, like you said, putting that plan together avoids uh, some of those uh, issues. Right. And, Especially with the holidays, you know, consider taking a container, an empty container with you to a holiday party, and maybe you'll get some leftovers to go home. I know my family always dishes out leftovers to me, even when I don't expect it. Um, so, you know, factor that into your meal planning, too. Um, are there holiday parties you're going to that you can expect leftovers? And if not, make sure you just have some things in the pantry that won't go bad if you don't use them and you unexpectedly get leftovers. Yeah, good uh, good point. I'm going to be bringing a whole bag of uh, containers to uh, my family. But that's a different story, too. Uh, <laughs> finally, uh, prep ahead time savers. Uh, got a couple of questions in this area, but uh, th this is where you really can find some extra time uh, ahead of the week. And it comes into like cutting up vegetables, doing those sorts of things. Yeah. So carve out time um, each week to prep, prep for those dinner components um, to ease those family meal times during the week. So like like you said, peeling and chopping your veggie veggies, pre-cooking your rice, um, beans or lentils too, and roasting veggies as well. So if you're cooking or cutting and prepping all of that ahead of time, it saves you so much time the day of. Um, so for example, if you have a if you have a party on Wednesday, a work party Wednesday night, um, make sure you're, you know, you're getting your grocery shopping done on Sunday or maybe Monday night and doing those prepping things ahead of time so that once Wednesday comes, maybe you have, you're eating at home really quick and then going to the party, or maybe you're not eating that day, but you definitely need something for lunch on Thursday. Question on cooking the proteins. So when you're like considering cooking the proteins up front, let's use the taco example for a minute. You know, do you, would you recommend uh, on a time saver thing to maybe cook that on a Sunday and then you're going to add like you could cook up the and brown the the hamburger or the turkey or, you know, whatever uh, is that protein choice. But is that something that you could do ahead of time? And how many days can you let that go before you're like, yeah, I probably should eat that. Yeah, that's a great question. And this is, you know, really important for food safety. So if you are cooking your meat ahead of time, um, I'd say same with the vegetables too. If you're cooking veggies ahead of time, um, I give it three days. The fourth day is like a smell it, touch it. Does it look okay? Then I might feel comfortable eating it personally, but if I'm feeding it to a child, I might think twice about that. So um, a good rule of thumbs is just three days. All right. That's good to know because I'm thinking on that prep time or even the leftovers too, sometimes you get into uh, some weird situations there. All right. Quickly uh, on uh, some meal uh, uh, ideas and solutions on the budget. Uh, we kind of talked a little bit about some of those, uh, but uh, I rotisserie chicken like became the hottest thing in grocery, I think, uh, in the last five years. I don't know what it is, but uh, you can find it everywhere. Absolutely. And we have great rotisserie chickens here at hy -Vee. Um, You can use that to build your balanced meal. Like I said, with cooking meat ahead, similar to this, when you pick up that chicken, try to eat it within three days, um, then it might be a little questionable after that. But super easy. Last week, I actually did this myself. Um, I pulled the chicken off the bones. I threw some barbecue sauce on 
on top and I put it into a little slider with some coleslaw I made that week. So super easy, you know, something like that. You could even pick up a coleslaw off the shelf. And the taco night uh, for the whole family. I like this one. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, this quick and easy recipe because that you can incorporate the bean. You know, you don't, I don't know. I don't, never grew up with beans a lot. So um, it's weird to say beans in a taco recipe, but hit me. Yeah, so taco night can bring the whole family together to the table. You have plenty of options, um, you know, separate them all out, then everyone can make their own tacos. Um, mash up a can of black beans with your ground meat um, to stretch that flavor and um, kind of bulk up a good amount of fiber into there. So beans we know have a lot of fiber, um, really nutrient dense and can go a long way with, um, with tacos. I, that's, it, it's an interesting concept and I keep saying I'm going to try this and uh, I do have a can of black beans that I've lined up for this. So I'm getting the courage to, to give it a shot, on it, but uh, I think it's a good idea for sure. All right. If people want to learn more, uh, ask questions um, uh, or just sort of like, help me, Aaron, uh, where can they find uh, you and uh, get help? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm your local high V dietitian here in Madison. You can find me on high V.com slash health. All right, Aaron, thank you so much for all of your help this year. It's been great working with you. We appreciate it. Have a great holidays and we'll look forward to having you back next year. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, uh, you've got the plan now, everybody. And it's really easy. So I uh, hope you have good luck here on cooking up some uh, good meals here during the holiday season.